Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. There's a new tool in Photoshop. Well, technically it's currently in the beta version of Photoshop. It's called the adjustment brush. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about this new tool in Photoshop. Before I begin, I do have some housekeeping I'd like to take care of. I know that most of you watch my videos on my YouTube channel. I am at Anthony Morganti on YouTube and there I have over 2000 videos. Some of you, though, watch my videos on my website, onlinephotographytraining.com, and I have all those videos here as well and some articles, too. The thing, though, my main website is actually anthonymorganti.com. Now, here is where you'll find all those free downloads I have, you know, keyboard shortcuts. I have some mini courses you could download for free. I do have things here I sell as well. I have an Ultimate Lightroom Classic training course, and I have some presets and other things. The thing, though, is many people will be on this website, they're in the middle of a course, and then they want to see what other videos I have. And if they do, they have to either go to my YouTube channel or they have to go to onlinephotographytraining.com. So what I've done is on my main website, anthonymorganti.com, I have this blog link. If you click on that, there you'll get all my videos. Well, technically, you're not going to get all 2,000. I only have about a dozen there so far, but from this point going forward, whenever I record a new video, I will put it on YouTube, of course, and then it will be on onlinephotographytraining.com, and it will be here. So you don't have to jump all over from website to website to find my stuff. Also, one other slight change. If you ever noticed in the description below my videos, I always have a lot of stuff down there, like a lot of links to products, a lot of links to like the gear I use and just a lot of stuff. And a lot of times I'll direct you to go down there like I'm doing a video on something and I say, oh, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. And you have to search for it. Well, I'm going minimal from this point forward. From now on, if you look at the description below my video, I'm just going to have what is absolutely necessary down there so you don't waste a lot of your time searching for what you want to find. So, for example, this is a video right here on Photoshop. So I have a link to Adobe's website for Lightroom and Photoshop. And because I am an Adobe affiliate, if you click that link and buy anything, I'd make money on it. So I have this little thing right here saying, let you know that I'm going to earn money if you click on this link and buy anything. And then there's a link to my code of ethics statement. So basically, I'm going to have just the minimal amount of info below my videos so it doesn't waste your time. So that's it. I just wanted to mention that. Now let's talk about this new tool, this adjustment brush tool. Really, the adjustment brush tool is just another way for you to apply an adjustment layer. Now, if you're not familiar with what an adjustment layer is, if you have an image opened up into Photoshop, uh, you may see over on your right-hand panel a tab that says Adjustments. And there you'll have a part of that tab that says Single Adjustments. These are the adjustment layers. And there's 16 of them here. So let's just say on this image that I wanted to warm up the sky. So I could use a photo filter for that. So I could click right here, or if you don't see this here, uh, you could go to the bottom. There's a little circle down here and all the adjustment layers are here as well. And same thing. So I could click here for a photo filter and you could see it defaults to a warming filter. I could click any type of filter I want. Let's stay with the warming filter. And I could, let's say, bring the density up so it's a little stronger. Now I don't want it everywhere on the image. I just want it on the brightest part of the image. So typically what I would do is then make sure that I'm clicked on the mask because adjustment layers come with masks. I'd invert this mask by hitting command I on my Mac. It's control I on a PC. You see when it's a black mask, it removes that adjustment from everywhere. So to get it where I want it, I need a brush. So I'll just hit the B cam, my keyboard to get a brush and I'll take this big brush and I'm going to make sure I'm painting white. So white's the foreground swatch. Then I'll just paint the adjustment in to the brighter parts of the sky. So something really quick like that, right? So that's typically how I, or most people would use an adjustment layer. Well, the adjustment brush allows you to use a, an adjustment layer. It's just another way to do it. Let me get rid of this. I'll delete this. All right, totally. All right, so we're right back to where we started. Now let's just say I want to do the same adjustment, but I'm going to use an adjustment brush. The adjustment brush is in the same little cubby with the brush. So just long press with the left mouse button. You'll see there's actually three tools here. The adjustment brush is the middle one. Click on that. Go up to the top. There's a little drop down. Now you don't have all 16 adjustment layers here. 
for now, at least in the beta version, it looks like you have six, two, four, six. So we have six to choose from. And one of them, fortunately, is the photo filter. Now, you'll notice there's no adjustment layer here yet. To get it there, just start painting. So I started to paint. Now that adjustment layer is there, uh, my little drop down is here. I could pick exactly which photo filter I want to use and come in and do it. So for some people, this might be an easier way to do it or to access an adjustment layer or to it apply an adjustment layer. You don't have to invert a mask or anything like that. Um, if you're more experienced at Photoshop, this might be a clumsy way for you to do it. You might prefer to do it the original way. So it's really just, you know, up to you which way you like better. One way isn't better than the other because they both accomplish the exact same thing. There are sometimes, though, more steps involved, and it may be kind of confusing if you get a little more complicated at what you're trying to do. Let me try to explain. I have this image here of this model. She's in a field. And let's just say that I'd like the background to be black and white, and I want the model to stay in color. So what I could do first, or what I would do first, is I would get a selection of the background. And the easiest way to do that is to select the subject first. So I'll go up to select and I'll select the subject. And eventually you'll see there's marching ants around the subject. So far, so good. Now I want to refine the selection a little bit, make it better. So we'll go up to select, then to select and mask. When I do that, you'll see I have it set with a view with a black background. You could pick the view you want. I usually use the use on black or overlay, which are the two that I most often use. You can see there's a number of different ones here. Some work better for some images, others work better for different images. On black works pretty well for this image. Next, I would go up and refine the hair by clicking this button. See the hair got a little better. Next, I would get this second brush from the top. This is the Refine Edge Brush or Refine Edge Tool. And I'll get a bigger brush maybe with the right bracket key and then just kind of paint in here to make sure that's good. Yeah, so far, let's just say for the sake of argument, that's good enough. I'm going to output it to a selection. And, well, before I do that, though, I mentioned that I want to apply the adjustment. I want to make the background black and white. So I want to apply the adjustment to the background. Right now, I have the subject selected. So what I need to do is just click invert here. So it just inverted my selection. So now the background is selected and the subject isn't selected. That's the way I want it. So I'll click OK. All right. Now, to get this black and white background, the way I typically would do it, I, always go, I would go up here. I usually go up here and not down to that little circle. And I'll just click on the black and white adjustment layer right here. And you can see the background is immediately black and white, like right away. And I could come in and adjust the um, black and white mix as well, right? So I could come in and do that. Let's just say for the sake of argument, let's get rid of that, that you want to use the adjustment brush instead. So let's start over. Let's uh, go up to select and select our subject. And once it selects subject, we're going to go to select and we're going to go to select and mask. And again, we're going to refine the hair. And again, we're going to have our little refine edge brush and brush there. Again, we're going to invert it, clicking there. Again, we'll click OK. So we have our selection. Now we'll go to our actual adjustment brush. We're going to use the black and white um, adjustment layer, but you'll notice nothing happened yet. I have to actually do a brush stroke for it to kick in. So I'll do that and you can see it kicked in. So it might be a little more like clumsy that way maybe. It's still easy though. I, I think it's easy. So just, you know, I think what they've designed this adjustment brush for, I think it's more designed for people that aren't used to using Photoshop. They're more used to using Lightroom. And it's helping those people become acclimated to Photoshop by using an adjustment brush because there are masking brushes or is, there is a masking brush in Lightroom in kind of a similar operation. So um, I think that's what that is for. Now, there are limitations, as I mentioned. Uh, if you look up here, there are 16 different adjustment layers that I could apply manually, but with the adjustment brush, um, as I mentioned, there are only uh, six of them so far, so not all 16 are there. Also, if you go down 
uh, to this little circle and click, you have all 16 adjustment layers, plus you have three others, pattern, gradient, and solid color. So really you have 19 available here, 16 up here, but with the adjustment brush, you only have six. So hopefully, uh, again, this is still in beta. Hopefully they add more to the adjustment brush so that you could do more with it. Um, maybe you want to add a curves adjustment or levels adjustment or something like that. And you only want it brushed into a certain spot on the image. Hopefully they add that down the road somewhere. Um, but you know, who knows it's in beta and they don't really tell you their plans. We just have to keep downloading the new beta releases as they're released and see what happens and see if anything has changed from one version to the next version. So that's it. That's the adjustment brush in Photoshop. Is it something you'd use or nah? Let me know in the comments. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.